Hello, welcome back Thursday nights. We were away last week because I was quite ill, but I am I'm better. Uh, rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. I am still alive and well, and I here I saw that Jeff. Uh, <laughs> I am alive and well, and we're back. So we missed our Act Two and Cthulhu last week, but we're back. We're maintaining our schedules. We're back with Starfinder, and uh, we left off with potential death. Potential death last time. So we're going to see what happens with that. But we'll do a roundtable introductions. We're playing musical chairs here. Last session, Aaron was away, but Tyler was here. But this session, Aaron's here and Tyler's away. So there's just some empty spots here and there. And we'll get creative. And Tyler and Aaron's characters will just swap places. And we'll go from there. So, uh, Aaron, you're first in the overlay. Tell us about Raph. So Rafe is a Rafe. kish. That's okay. Rafe's a kish. Uh, from the shattered floating city of Ishtamak, who uh, up until recently, his entire civilization was still stuck in the Bronze Age after they collapsed from being a, a starfaring race. But a group of starfinders and a cult of devourer came to his world and shook things up. Uh, and then everybody else came in and, and they were immediately thrust into uh, the galactic world, uh, the galactic uh environment uh and one of the corporations that came to ishtamak uh, hired uh rafe as a pathfinder for them and a scout uh, and they were so impressed by his diligence and work that when they left to come to this new colony world they offered him a position with their team uh with the understanding that if the colony went well they would uh, offer up an opportunity for other Kish to immigrate to this new world and form a form part of the colony themselves. Yes, yes, and things are going swimmingly so far for that. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a lot of talk about maybe having an election real soon here. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> Losing confidence with your constituents, but you can turn around here. You you made one friend last last session. You got their vote, I'm sure. Uh, Jeff, can you tell us about uh, Dr. Bostwick? Dr. Bostwick is a uplifted bear around 10 feet tall and around 1,000 pounds. He's from the diaspora. He's an elder man, scientist, explorer. He uh, has traveled the galaxy far and wide, and he is going to die here by getting eaten by a flower. <laughs> Fascinating. Absolutely yep. fascinating, and truly, he would have it no other way. Uh, <laughs> but he is a biohacker, wrestler, and he is a geneticist, and is very interested in, in collecting as, as many genetic samples from various alien species across the galaxy, and then repurposing them into various serums and, 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 and uh, performance enhancers for, 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 for a fee. For a fee. I mean, he did. He's dead now, essentially. I've written him off. He's basically dead, but we'll see. <laughs> Have you? No, you haven't. You you guys yeah, haven't really, given up on I them really yet. I like my backup character. <laughs> oh, all right. You will sacrifice yourself for the rest of the no. party. No, no, no. I love Bostwick. Um, oh, we play musical chairs. You guys are all in different places now. That's okay. I'll fix that. You were in the right places a moment ago. I'm not crazy. I keep telling myself. Uh, Jeremy, can you tell us about Blim Blam while I fix our overlay, please? Yes, I am Blim Blam. I am private, first class, most classy. I will never die other than plants swallowing me, but maybe I will survive that. I don't understand its digestive system, so maybe it will just, I will come out all silky smooth and be fine after it swallows me whole. Maybe. And then you can establish Apple Teeny. That's true. I really want to survive and go find our mountain town and make Appletiniville. <laughs> if you if Blim Blam dies, will someone carry that on? That's the that's the real question. Probably not. <laughs> no, you you are the maybe maybe that's where our backup characters have been living this whole time. <laughs> they just send down the mountain from Apple. We heard you guys need some help from <laughs> Appletini. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> An unknown Vesk colony. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Megan, can you tell us about Zenny, please? 
Uh, yeah, so Zenny, I apologize. Last week I had the wrong race on my car, uh, my thingy. I don't know. I'm a um, Zenny is a is a Sh- uh, Sh- Shireen, Shireen, Sh- Shireen, um, a uh, large bug dude. Yep. Anyway, um, Zenny is a mystic, um, and um, gosh, I feel really flustered for some reason. Um, let me start again. So um, many, many years ago, Zeddy was a, um, a mercenary, went and uh, killed lots of things and people and, and whatnot, and, and uh, kind of came to one day out standing on top of a, uh, a mass of um, dead bodies covered in blood. And Zeddy put down his, ri- put down their rifle and uh, brought up um, the, the, the mystic ways of <laughs> Kate and Kaylin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and has sworn off um, killing uh, themselves, not necessarily others, um, and have uh, brought up the uh, pacifist ways. Um, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Zenny is currently naked holding. Oh, I flaming, f- holding flaming <laughs> underwear. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, no. I totally <laughs> forgot about yeah. that. You ripped off your clothes and you lit your underwear on fire. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. Where we go? Uh okay. Okay. So last session. And that's gonna make the difference. It maybe. Last session <laughs> we got really into the, the hex rules, and that's why it took a couple of days for us to move from where we currently were and up into this mountain region from the that stone spire. Here you encountered some uh, treacherous slopes, or it looked like a some sort of landslide had happened recently, and you checked out the scene. And uh, you found there was like a little lean-to that someone had built, and there were what were they spider deer that were in there? Spider goats? Spider goats. Spider goats. Spider goats. Spider goats. Yes. Mm-hmm. You tried reaching out to your um, scout, Elenez, uh, to and there was no answer. But they appeared on the scene shortly after, and they were quite embarrassed. Uh, they had br- accidentally broken their communicator. And they are lost out here in the wilderness. And they they pleaded with you. They asked that you please not tell the others so they don't lose faith in their abilities as a scout. And this was not an accurate representation of what uh, how they operate. And you you promised to keep that a secret on their behalf. And Elenez gave you an amulet of camouflage for doing so. You were also talking about maybe going back and domesticating spider goats back at the uh, the colony. Uh, but on your way back, you encountered a uh, strange aroma, an alluring aroma that drew Blim Blam and Dr. Bostwick to it. They just just took off running and they could not help themselves. And they got closer and closer until they were face to face with this gnarly plant creature with gnashing teeth and vines poking out and... Uh, you are currently caught in its in its gaze, and that's that's where we left off. We actually left off with having to roll damage on Blim Blam, uh, deciding their fate because my uh, my foundry went went poop at the end of the last session, and it just kind of stopped, and I couldn't uh, I couldn't keep going. So let's get you guys over to the back to the battle map. We get things moved on the overlay here, so people can see the battle map at home. We'll get some music going with the sirenscape. Some epic music, as they call it. Didn't, didn't. And let's roll some damage against old Blim Blam. Determining the fate of Blim Blam. You said they won't kill you outright, though, right? I don't think so. No, I think 10 is its max damage, so I don't think I'll die outright. Okay. 14 points of damage. Oh my god. Okay, so that goes through all my stamina. Because I think, what was max damage I rolled last time? Oh, yeah, I thought 10 was. Yeah, you rolled 10 last time. <laughs> so, oh. Okay, so that goes through all 11 of my stamina. So that's down to zero. Okay. And then we still got three more to take off my hit points. So you got hit points, and then once you go through hit points, then there's resolve points before you die. I'm down to six hit points. Okay. <laughs> um. I'm okay, you guys. <laughs> I'm in this. Uh, 
I'll drown it in my blood. Run away! <laughs> the turn tracker's still up. I'm gonna add um, you to this here, Aaron. And go ahead and roll your initiative. And we'll factor you in after this current round. But let's get you on the initiative tracker. There should be a, a D20 on the initiative tracker to the right of your name. Just yep. click that. Got it. That'll roll your initiative. Beautiful. Uh, so it was that thing's turn. So Bostwick, it's over to you. So I'll do a reminder here. So it's got lure. If you're within 120 feet of this thing, uh, you have to make a DC 13. We'll save the beginning of each round. Otherwise, you're drawn towards it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Isn't it actually my turn before Dr. Yeah, Bostwick? Yeah, I was going to say, Rafe, Rafe would go if you wanted Rafe in. I was going to introduce Rafe here. next round. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. Uh, and then once you're in there, once you're within a certain radius, there's a paralyzing scent. It exudes a mm -hmm. sweet odor. And any living creature with a sense of smell that enters or starts its turn in this area of effect must succeed at a DC 13 fortitude save or be paralyzed for one round. That's interesting, Matt, because on my character sheet where it says senses, it says none. <laughs> none. <laughs> Clearly, that and, means. <laughs> and with the lure, the affected creature within five feet can take no actions and offers no resistance to right. its attacks. Okay. So, I gotta start with a will save, right? Will save, DC 13. Okay, so will save. Melissa did give us a reroll to any player whose name starts with J. Just so. Oh! So Jeremy or Jeff only? Oh, I see what's going <laughs> That's on fair. here. That's fair. That's fair. the ones who... <laughs> that is fair. I'm gonna oh. have to use it right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just use that. I hate you 20 years. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, uh -huh. two turns, I'll get there. Two turns, I'll get there. <laughs> All right, uh, that's a fail. Okay. Very good. Uh, and, and that's my turn. I can't do anything, I think. All right, so top of the turn order, we're going to say that um, the Dr. Strania feigns back and is going to go get some help. She's going to go look for Elenez and try to get some backup. And in doing so, is going to pass by Rafe and fill in Rafe on everything that's going on and what's happening. Rafe, top of the turn order now, I am gonna need you to make me a DC 13 will save, please. All right, let's give this a shot here. You're within the 120 feet. You're good. Ooh. So you're not affected by this. So Dr. Strania runs past you and you can hear the sound of struggle and a firefight and everything going on in the distance. And uh, Estrania fills you in on what's going on as she runs off to go and try and find Elenez to get some extra help here. <clears throat> All right. So, top of the turn order means uh, Blim Blam. Okay. Well, I was good on the paralyzing save, but I still need to make that will save. So, oh, let's see I if I can... both, by the way? Uh... Yes. Go ahead and make yours, okay. please, Jeff. Yeah, let's do yeah, at the start of its oh, the start of its turn. So yeah, you should. Okay. Yep. So you're still uh... you're still paralyzed. <laughs> yeah. All right, blim blim. <laughs> okay, so let's save against that will. DC thirteen will save. Whoa! Yes! You come to your senses after this thing bites you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what about Doctor Bastwick. Uh, that's not my that's my voice what, what just happened here <laughs> i was obsessed with the smell i'm going to take my sword and i'm going to chop at this thing but i'm going to focus on chopping on the vines that are holding dr bastwick no no blim blam drag me away run away and drag me with you I'm yeah. for a call, you stupid bear i'm cutting your food <laughs> 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 Uh, okay. crap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to attack this thing. Okay. Wow. T nice. 20, that, that's a hit. Two, Two. damage. Okay. <laughs> the dice don't... I mean, I get to save, dead? which is something. Well, I yeah. mean, we're, we're first level characters. Damage is not going to be good for so that's damage. one action. Um, is there any sort of disengage in Starfinder? Yeah. 
there's yeah. there's there's guarded step which is just like a five foot, five step, foot step and then there's the withdraw action but i the can't remember if that's time. a full it's round. a full round action yeah it's a full round okay action. so i'll take a guarded step to move back five feet but this thing okay. has reach i assume uh yeah <laughs> uh yeah okay so i'll take the guarded step to move back five um uh, it does have still reach. With it does. It has okay. reached 10 feet. I'll tell you that right. You can see the vines are slithering towards you, and they can still reach you as you step away. Can you do more than one guarded step nope. in a turn? No. Okay. No. Do, you want to take, do you want to take back your attack and just run? Take the withdrawal? Yeah, if I... It was only two damage. Just, yeah, if we want to walk it back, I'm fine with that. Okay. And you just do your disengage. Yeah, and how much movement can you take on that? Is that your... Uh, movement? withdraw, move up to double your speed. Starting square is not considered threatened. However, the second of the 10 foot would be a threatened square, so it would get an attack of opportunity. Because it's got uh, 10 foot of reach. Yes. Okay, I can't risk letting it... So do you want to just stick with the five I'll moving five feet and taking and doing I feel the like, damage? I feel okay. like that's what he would have done. He would have okay. tried chopping at the vine on Bostwick and then take a guarded step. Sounds good. All right. Next up is Zenny with the flaming underwear. Yep. So do I, do I have to do a will save? Uh, where are you standing? halfway nope oh, wicked all right well um so yeah i'm going to um let's, hold on a second okay so i am going to uh um cast command actually see if i can't bend this somewhat sentient um plant mass to my my will okay is, is it mindless uh let's see here be into mind affecting or anything yeah. mm -hmm. hmm <laughs> the only immunities it has and this is word for word plant immunities yeah so it's 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 mindless it's they're they're yeah. immune to to mind control mind effect just command, the plant all that stuff I'll just uh, chuck my flaming underwear at it then. Okay. <laughs> All right. I don't know what the chances of lighting something on fire are. We had this come up before. I know what the burning condition does, but things igniting is a different whole nother can of beans. Right? Like, do you want me to roll like a, a four-sided dice for 50-50 whether or not there's like flammable roughage around? Well, roll, roll your attack. Let's see what happens. And how far can you throw your underwear? Who don't know. Uh <laughs> I want to say that go uh, 15 feet. You're gonna have to get closer than that, then. And technically, if if you're just aiming to hit a square, yeah. it's a it's just an eight an armor class. You just have to hit armor class five to hit a specific square, but it wouldn't necessarily catch it on fire. Yeah. All right. You're gonna move up closer. I'm gonna say you'll have to be within 15 feet to throw your underwear at it. Um, how far? One, two. I'm 20 feet, yeah? I think you're 25 feet. Here, I'll use the ruler. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. 25 feet away. Okay, so I'll move up 10. I'll go up by... Um, oh, gosh. I want to go there, though. Uh, all right. No, I'll go. Absolutely. I there was the... There was, there's the two saves, right? There's the one save that's the scent from very yes. far. That's the will save. But then... There's another save. Bostwick so you, failed. Like, there's the paralysis that's even closer, right? Yes. Great. Um, yeah, no, I'm gonna... <laughs> um, pacifist? Sorry, I just saw Australia's place yeah. comment. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna move forward 10. I can't move without moving everybody with me. Oh, okay. Not can, me. Can I? Nope. If the uh, if you go into your settings, Megan, like 
Um, you can, there's a setting you can do under configure settings that's left click to release objects. If you toggle that, you can just click somewhere on the on the map to let go of anything you've selected. Oh, wicked. So if, oh, perfect. Megan, so, I need you to make me a DC 13 fortitude save, please. DC fortitude save. And if I don't have it, I have to grab it from the thing. <laughs> I like the Tom Jones talk. Uh, Fortitude. <laughs> Fortitude, you, it's on your character sheet. It's on the right-hand side, right underneath Intelligence. Just click the word Fortitude. God, oh my god. I'm sorry, people. No, it's all good. Okay. Alright, oh, so oh, you oh. are drawn in by the sweet, sweet aroma oh. of this plant, and you... You're holding your flaming underwear and you just stop and you can't oh, no. move. You're 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 frozen, you're paralyzed. Ooh, Spot. I I forgot how shields work in this one. I apologize for the is it possible for me to have used my third action to have readied my shield since I did it attack does, guard it's, set? Uh readying your shield doesn't really work that same way in, in Starfinder. It just gives you a flat armor class bonus if you've got it out. Oh, okay. I was used to Pathfinder Second Edition. Yeah, no. Okay. You, know, you don't get you don't, you don't get three actions, by the way. It's, you yeah, get, yeah, it's just you a move and a standard, standard move or a full. Oh, there's okay. there's swifts and stuff too. So, I've yeah. got Pathfinder two on the head too much. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all good. This game could use an injection of Pathfinder two. Yes, it would benefit from it. All right, so you are almost entirely frozen in place. I am able to move your body, except to squirm slightly, move your eyes. And so on. So you're frozen on the spot, Zenny. As you smell the sweet, sweet aroma of this plant. Uh, next up is the plant. Mm, I've got two, three targets? How close are you, Megan? Are you within ten feet? No. I got two targets. One of them hurt it and is trying to get away. I'm going to roll to see who it attacks. So one, two is Bostwick, three, four is Blim Blam. Bostwick it is. Bostwick it is. Wraps its vines around you and the ends of the vines open up and there's like little teeth in there and it tries to bite you. Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> Bye everybody! Critical hit! Oh, and it does! Oh crap! Oh uh, no. Double uh, damage. Oh no. Uh, I think that's gonna kill him. Twenty six. Oh my god. Um. All right. Holy crap. So that, that's all of his stamina. Okay. That's all of his hit points. Okay. And that's would still would be seven left over. I can't remember. Resolve. The full. Uh, my resolve. I have four. So I think he's dead. No, because it's got it. Right? It, Maximum. Well, uh, are we using what's the what's the extreme damage rules? Like, massive damage rules. Massive is, damage. You have to take enough damage from a blow to equal your total hit, your your maximum hit points. So you'd have to go under by your maximum hit points. Okay. So yeah, he's not he's not dead, but he's dead. So yeah, he's at zero <laughs> and, and dead. Okay. Uh, so you're you're unconscious. Effectively dead. Yes. Yeah, but you could spend your resolve points and just stay, auto stabilize. But true. Yeah, it's as soon as you have no resolve points left, you're dead. Like, automatically dead, nothing can save you, bring it back. So oh, as no, long I, as you I have all, resolve I points, have yeah. then you're you're alive, you're you're breathing, you're just not conscious. So you immediately fall unconscious, and you can no longer take any actions. Uh, while dying, you lose one resolve point each round at the end of your turn. If your hit points reach zero during your turn, such as from a form of attack of opportunity or provoked... You do not, and you do not have resolve points until you end your next turn. This continues till either you die or stabilize. So you're going to lose a, a resolve point every turn now. But he end, can he can use his resolve points to automatically stabilize. Uh, yeah, right. I, I'm going to automatically stabilize, and as long as okay. you don't do anything to destabilize it, then okay. Yeah. All right. It, it's basically just delaying the inevitable at the moment. <laughs> Rafe? Rafe, so you watch Zenny run up there with flaming underwear in their hand and just kind of get just stop on the spot. You just watch Bostwick drop. Blim Blam's trying to get away. What do you what do you want to do? 
<laughs> he's gonna he's gonna go back to the colony. He's like, yeah. I don't <laughs> that is a wise decision. Yeah. Not so a bad uh, idea. I'm gonna use my uh, full round trick attack action. So as part of that, he moves using the train, staying back away from this thing, so he can line up a shot on its uh, on a on its weak area. Um, so he's gonna try his survival check. To see if he's gonna get this trick attack off. What's the CR of the creature? Hold on a second here, my sound's gone all funky. My audio is messed up on me. There we go. Okay, that's working. Sorry, what was the question? What's the CR of, of this creature? The CR is four. Holy crap, so I've gotta get yeah. a twenty-four. A twenty-four on this uh survival this, check to this get thing my is trick serious. Attack off. Yeah. I got the trick attack off. Holy now, crap. Now we'll see if I can hit, though, because that's always been the problem. You get one, but mm -hmm. you don't get the other. All right, so obviously I'm using my uh, uh, azimuth laser pistol to try to uh, to knock this out of the ballpark here. Okay. So it is flat-footed to me. Okay. So it's minus two to its armor class. Okay. That's 22. All yep. right. So let's do some damage. Plus <clears throat> 1d4. Four points of fire damage. So if it's vulnerable to fire, that would be six points of fire damage. Okay. It's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't say turn. that it, it doesn't say that it is or isn't. That's fair. Uh, I'm just looking at its character sheet again here. Yeah, it doesn't say whether it's vulnerable to it or not. I didn't think so, but I was hoping. So four points of damage. Okay. Holy crap! This thing has a lot of hit points. You got it's what I figured. I was like, uh, level CR four. four. Is this an epic encounter? Yeah, it is an epic encounter. <laughs> Bostwick, you're lying there, stabilized. I spend a resolve, I stabilize. Okay. Wait, no, actually, doesn't the doesn't the plant go first? The plant goes before me, now. Oh, I attacked. Oh, no, the plant, the plant attacked I me. Attacked what am I you. talking about? That's right. Uh, yeah, I'll burn a resolve. I'm stable. There's the sta stable condition. There we go. All right. Uh, Blim Blam, over to you. You are free of this thing's grasp, but, um, yeah, Boswick just dropped and Venny's now trapped in it. I'm still Zenny. within the threatened area, so I'll do one more guarded step to get sure. myself out of its reach. Yep. Boswick is still in its reach, so I'm going to shoot it now. And as best I can, as a sharpshooter, I will be trying to shoot again at the vines that are holding back the Boswick. Okay. I'm gonna say it's kind of just slithered and it's way yeah. over to Boswick, so it's kind of consuming him, sitting on top of him. That's bad. KAC? Uh, yep, that's a hit. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. Nice. No, no, that did not hit. I apologize. KAC. I looked at its EAC. Did not hit. Oh, my God. That was good damage, sorry. too. Sorry. If you have a reroll because your name is Jay, go ahead and use it if you want. Uh, I mean, why not? Why <laughs> not? Did you have a you have another reroll? Okay. Oh. Yeah. The exact same roll. <laughs> I mean, oh. seventeen for a first level character. It's good. good. That's, That's good. good. That's really good. good. Zenny, but, uh... I need you to make me a uh, fortitude save, DC thirteen, please. To try and break out of this paralyzing scent. You muted me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeez, I'm all over the place. Um, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> Am I able to use my spell focus for this or not? I don't believe so. You are, you're effectively, you are paralyzed right now under its spell. I just thought I would ask. That's okay. Ooh. You're still under this thing's spell. <laughs> so Alright, so it is downed 
Bostwick, and it's going to move forward. Why is it? Why, oh, because I have the ruler tool open. It's going to move forward to the two that are trying to get away. One and two is Blim Blam. Three and four is Zenny. Can I, can I make an argument? Yes. So, Dr. Dr. Bostwick is quite large. <laughs> if this is a creature that is just trying to, like, eat and stuff... It is mindless. Are, are you are you are you offering up? The, I'm offering myself. Are you offering up Doctor Bostwick as a? Yeah, because this is ridiculous. So like, I All would right. be more than happy you to know. let it swallow Bostwick <laughs> and let the others get away. Blam. Are you trying to? I you're... would. I'm more than happy. I, otherwise, three of us are gonna die, and Rafe is gonna watch all three of us die. <laughs> true. That's exactly what's gonna true. happen. It is true. There's it no is, way we're. It is true. Sure. It is true. It's true. This thing is. This thing is way too tough. So we're just gonna say it just kind of engulfs Bostwick and consumes him? Well, I mean, yeah. we would have we would have three more rounds to kill it. I mean, I mean, if you guys want to play it out, I just don't see how we're, you know, we, we have two, so, two where people are paralyzed, oh, yeah, yeah. one we, hit away, like... I mean, we, I'll once make I can get trade. away from it, I could kite it and kill it. We talked about it the end of the last session. This thing is quite slow. You probably can all move faster than it. So once you're out of its radius and you're no longer in its spell, it's not the hardest thing to get away from because it is rather slow moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the maximum damage I could do to it between now and your complete and total death is 24 points of damage. And that's if I hit with my trick attack every time right? and got maximum damage. And I expect it has more than 24 hit points. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A hell so, of a uh, lot more. So there's no way we can save Doctor. Like Boss. double that. that. I, yeah, double I, that. I am more than willing if if you're willing if you're willing to make that trade to say it just starts devouring Bostwick, giving the other two a time to crawl away. Because he is the most I, I'm okay meaty with that. In, in if, attractive meal. If the rest of the party is willing to walk away from Doctor Bostwick, as he gets consumed by this strange alien life that you're discovering on this planet as you make your way across it. If Zenny I, wasn't I leave here, it to the others. I would say no if Zenny wasn't here, but I have to save at least one person. So I will do my best to grab Zenny and try to pull her away. We must fall back. There are there are beasts that we face that we cannot defeat. I learned this well in my world. There is nothing we can do for Dr. Boswick. Bostock will, as he's going in, if you could just utter some words like, Run, blim blam. Save the rest. Start Apple DD. <laughs> okay, Doctor. Besides. Uh, does everybody <laughs> bow our heads for Starfinder death? First. Wow. Might be the only one, though. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. If we keep getting rolling random encounters like that, we're not getting back to camp. We got Ooh, what four day know, march right? to get back to the colony. <laughs> yep. Oh, goodness. Yep. Okay. So, all right. So this thing will use its turn this round to start consuming Bostwick. As you're talking, a vine <laughs> goes down your throat, <laughs> and you just start oh, to I like. Would want you, to have gone. Just, you start growling, right? Because you're no longer kind of communicating mentally, telepathically anymore. Oh. As this thing starts to chomp and take chunks out of your fur and start to consume you. Uh, okay, that takes us to Rafe. Uh, Rafe, will, uh, I mean, he's holding position, waiting until the others fall back to him. Uh, covering their retreat in case this thing, for some reason, decides to move off of Dr. Boswick. Okay. So basically, uh, I'm, I'm just hold, I'm holding my turn until. So basically, it's just a matter of blim blim. You want to grab Zenny and get her out of there. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's immobile. She can't resist. So you can just kind of grab her and go. Away. So like, four uh, of my arms will grab her, and my legs will shimmy <laughs> as best I can. She's paralyzed, so she can't even resist. Like I was looking at the grapple rules, and she's not even gonna really resist when it comes to grappling because she's she can't move. So you can just kind of like yeah, grab her and go. And when PFC Blim Blam gets back to Rafe's position, Rafe will throw uh, Zenny over his shoulders since he's a little bit bigger than PFC Blim Blam, um, and we'll 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 have a tactical withdrawal. 
And then a funeral for, uh, for Dr. Dr. Bostwick. <laughs> Rip. Oh, man. Doc, there's going to be no doctor. 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 <laughs> you do assume my next character doesn't have a PhD. <laughs> he, he just promised me an hour ago he was going to help me be a doctor so I could do the doctor thing too. That's and all then right. I let him die. No, Blim Blam. This world killed him. We need to learn to respect it more than we have. We need to be better prepared for this. We need to fall back to the colony, deal with the situations there, and then better prepare the teams who are going to explore this world. No one ex no one could have foretold that that was going to happen. There was no indication that there were such aggressive species on this world. But I had so much time. Do not fret, Blim Blam. You are more valiant than you think. I'm going to get the mask in the town, and the next one I see, I'm going to get something with fire. I'm going to burn the next one. I, I say we plant. name this plant this barbarian boss wicks bane the bastard the blue mm -hmm. the bastard the, the blue bull yes all right stupid blue bull. You pull back and you can hear the sounds saying <laughs> pulling apart Bosswick. You can hear Bosswick struggling a little bit in the distance. Putting up a bit of maybe, a fight. Maybe his maybe his stuff is still going off periodically and you just hear his like the inner workings of his <laughs> oh, mind. Oh god. No. Oh no. Oh god, being, being devoured and pain. Like, oh no. Oh, it hurts. It hurts <laughs> so bad. I've made a terrible <laughs> mistake. Come back. No, come back. <laughs> Uh, that's horrible. Oh, <laughs> no. That hurts my soul. <laughs> <laughs> that would be terrible. It would be. We'll say it. It, 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 it makes sense, though. Well, fortunately, the range on telepathy in this game is, is not that long. So. I think it's only 30 feet. So yeah, once you yeah. get out of 30 feet for him, I think you're good to go. Hmm. All right. Sad music playing as you hang your heads. And you start to make your way back to camp. You catch up to Dr. Strania. You let her know of what's happened. You have to restrain her as she tries to go back to administer medical help. And you say that there's nothing you could do for Dr. Bostwick at this point. And you must forge on back towards camp. We contact the colony, I would think, to notify them of both Dr. Boswick's death and the fact that there are some extremely aggressive species of flora and fauna out here and that uh, anyone going out needs to be better prepared to uh, engage the hostile life forms of this world. And that we'll be back in about three days, hard work. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yes, F's in the chat. For Dr. Bostwick. Uh, okay, so we're gonna head back. So you should it revealed all of the hexes around where you currently were. So I've marked off the one hex that you've already explored. The one that you're on is gonna get another X. So you can head either back the way you came, or you can hook up to the northwest and keep going through this mountain and then go back to camp. Like basically knock off another another hex if you want, or venture back to the, towards the spire. What do you want to do? Do you want to break new ground as we head back to camp? Well, that takes about a couple of days, though. To really it does because you're on, it's now yeah. mountainous terrain, yeah, so it's let's, really. Let's just, let's just head straight back to the colony because we need to get reinforcements, and and apparently there's stuff going on at the colony that we need to deal with. Yep. What do you guys say? Okay. Explosions and such. Uh, it's still paralyzed. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm gonna say that it has worn off at this point. <laughs> so, uh, mountain 
terrain would be two activities. And you guys had, what, two activities a day, didn't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's it counts from the one you're moving from and into. So it'll be four activities total is the, the rules. Two for the mm -hmm. mountain you're moving out of and two for the mountain you're moving into. Uh, so it would take, yeah, it would take you like four days just to get into the next hex. Yeah, so we'll go back the way we came. Trying to make our best speed back. Mm -hmm. For sure. Do we get any bonuses for going through places we've already been? You do get bonuses for that. Um, I can't remember. I, I was looking them up and I couldn't find them, which is silly. But there is, uh, it's it's something like half the amount of time because you've been there before. It's kind of, it's similar to Mutant Year Zero or once you've been through a hex, it's easier to traverse your way back through. Because otherwise it would take you forever to get back anywhere you went to on this map. <laughs> It'd take months. To get anywhere in here until you had a ship or some, some sort of vehicle again yeah exactly yeah. so yes it is it's like it's from what i remember it was like halved uh to go back to an area that you fully explore because maybe you sit, spend a day there and you do recon or whatever it's called and you fully explore that whole hex and then the ones surrounding it it unveils them on the map so you make your way back it's still going to be about a day's travel all in all to make your way back so you go back to the stone spire uh, you are aware of the locale. You are weary of these fire foxes as you make your way through. You go back past the spire, uh, on your way return. Uh, I'm going to get everybody to go ahead and make me a, a check. So go back past the spire. Go ahead and make me, oh, a perception check, please, everyone. Oh, no. 22. Okay. I have no skill in it, and wisdom is my dump step. That's fine. You never know. You could roll really well. All right. Rafe, you <laughs> you guys make your way back. You're 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 all down. You're affected by what happened with Dr. Bostwick. You got to know Bo Dr. Bostwick quite well on the ship the last couple months on the way here. Uh and you guys are moving at a, at a hurried pace trying to be aware of your surroundings, but almost to the point where it's a detriment and you're not uh, paying attention to what's going on around you. And as you're passing the stone spire, you can clearly make out and see that someone or something else has been here since you were here, like bipedal humanoid tracks. Can I discern where they came from? What, you know, what pattern they were moving around the spire and, and I'll what tell you, direction they went off? With, with your 22, yes. So, it looks like they came from the west. And it looks like it's a single pair of humanoid prints. It looks like they're wearing like boots or things like that, like booted prints. Uh, and it looks like they head off in the direction of your settlement based on can, looking at the tracks can i determine how long ago this uh this person was out here and based on the depth of the tracks maybe approximate size height uh, i mean 20, I, i'm a, with, I'm a with, tracker it's what yeah I no with, with your 22 i'm gonna say average height and weight like that of uh like an average sized human probably uh, for the, the depth timeline wise, you know, you were here three days ago. So it was between now and when you left, you're not able to determine exactly when they were here, but you know, it was within the last couple days. Apparently someone from the colony has been out to the spire without notifying us. That is something else we should have to look into when we return. That doesn't make sense. I was told many times not to share the information about that with my friends group. Exactly. Something else is going on here, obviously. Between the sabotage before we left camp, the explosions while we've been gone, and this, there's clearly more going on than meets the eyes. All three of them. So, yes. what will we do when we get back? 
I think we need to show people that we care about the members of our society and we do a proper burial for Dr. Bostwick. Because I don't know how to investigate anything, but I can uh, let people know how much I like Dr. Bostwick. I what? feel... Oh, no, you go. <laughs> No, no, you, by all means. You are and have been always so kind. I feel like that doctor wants our job. I feel we should make some plans to pull him into Hmm, maybe not. What say you? I do not understand all of the social norms yet, so I will follow your lead, Zinni. I do think we need to discuss what we have seen with the senior representatives of the corporation within the colony and shore our own morale and defenses before we begin our explorations again. I agree. With that, your comms all of a sudden start going off. They light up. It looks like uh, your chief advisor, Ezrin, is trying to get a hold of you. Hello? <laughs> no phone. Heard us. It's, it's Ezrin. Where are, where are all of you? We just we got word about what happened to Dr. Bostwick. And... Um... Two people have just showed up here almost simultaneously and they're looking for you. They they represent a couple of different charters. One from the Pozla, Poslatov Charter to our west and the other one is from the Celestine Charter. And they're refusing to talk to anybody except for the, um, the group of you. How far away are you? We are at the spire so are guests the finest accommodations we can muster tell them Nothing else. Hold firm until we arrive. Right, okay. Yes, uh, we'll uh, put them up in our best accommodations until you return. They seem quite anxious, though. Please return as soon as possible. We will make all haste. Oh, and those explosions, they keep happening from... Oh. Yes, we will deal with that as Veach, well. Veach's, Veach's house. All right, well, hurry back. And um, I'm sorry to hear about Dr. Bostwick. Um, the, uh, there's, there's, there's a uh, new representative that actually showed up, uh, you know, miraculously while Bostwick was away. And they're, they're also waiting for you back here at camp. Their name is Strix Techro Technomancer. I'm assuming that's your character, Jeff. No. No, it's Vernon. 
You're Vernon? Who's <laughs> Strix Technomancer? Yeah. That was the second character I was making as a backup. Oh, player. I thought because I saw Cyberborn and all this other stuff. Okay, Vask War. Okay, Death Touch. All right, Vernon, uh, a, a, a rather large, intimidating uh, Vesk by the name of Vernon is sitting here waiting for you also. We shall be there as quickly as we can. So all right, make haste. You make haste. So you make your way through the, <coughs> the foothills back towards your camp. It takes another day. It's very uneventful. But um, as you get back, uh, the people of your charter, of your colony, are like looking at you. And they're kind of like, they, they come over, the odd one. And they're like, I'm so sorry for Dr. Boswick. And they're giving their condolences for, for what happened. Others have, are, are, are more abrasive and like, where the hell were you? What We needed you when you were out gallivanting with, you come back with these goats, right? <laughs> gallivanting with goats. What, what is going on here? My friends, our job here is to expand this colony, to make it safe for you, to make it safe for us all. So we must understand what environment surrounds us. And you're right, we have found already threats to us, both flora and fauna, that we will need to understand and contain. That's why I'm here as a scout. Rest assured, we have the colony's best interests at heart. And that's why we have rushed back here to address these concerns to make this place safe before we expand further. Um, sorry, Jeff and chat. It's random, Jeff. It's random. They are <laughs> random. I roll them randomly. Uh, they go uh, uh, fine. Well, there's there's some strange people that showed up here. One of uh, a lone person came from one of the uh, neighboring colonies, and someone else with a whole team of people is here. They're they're looking to speak with you. I can, who is who is this? That's uh, like passionate. Who's Pat? <laughs> it's your rival, the doctor. No, it's not. You hate that slug, don't you? <laughs> Let's choose a name off the list. The random list of people. It's not Veach Veach, because Veach Veach is held up in their home. It is. Deirdrick, the long range communication specialist. You met her previously. Hush, dear Dridge, darling. She's Deirdre. Deirdre, sorry. She corrects you. <laughs> we Deirdre, laugh. we were on a ship for like months together, and don't you you don't know my name? We have traveled far. We I'm noticing slightly agitated Zenny. Um, uh, traveled far. And I am sorry for my mistake. Rest assured, we, the forefathers, are here and will make things right and she puts, she yeah puts, you better there's a lot of there's a lot of rumor and circulation going on the camp that we're ready for an election here because we're not to please the your leading style any of you points to she points to the three of you well dietrich my understanding of your processes are that this is a democracy and i would strongly encourage if you think that you can do better that you should take a role in leadership of this colony. I think you will find what you face, though, is more than you were anticipating. Please make sure to let them know that those who would like to nominate themselves can go forth and put themselves in a situation where a plant can lure you in and try to eat you while you are penalized. Well, I'm sure they would love to sign up for the job. It's it, it, Listen, it's not me. I'm, I'm not cut out for that. But, you know, Laishu's been doing a pretty damn good job while you've been away. But I'm very glad to hear that. I love to hear competent people take charge. 
No, you, I'm yeah. I'm serious. One thing I have learned is don't be afraid to work with people that are smarter than you. That's a stupid thing to do. Be happy you have smart, competent people around you. All right. Your trick is just kind of like, okay. <laughs> Anyways, there's a large Vesk asking for you. Uh, claim to be a late addition to the charter. Maybe go, maybe go meet up with them. They're, they're in your quarters. So we head over to the quarters. Sure. Vesk. Jeff, why don't you go ahead and describe your new character? What what do, what do they see when the door opens and, you're, you're, and Vernon is yeah. on the other side of the door? So when they, when they walk in, they see a Vesk in, in heavy armor, uh, cross-legged, sitting in kind of a meditative state in the middle of the floor. And you see, like, buzzing around him. It almost looks like there's just a swarm of insects. It, oh, his cool. eyes are closed. <laughs> nice. Hands are out. And when you walk, when the door opens, you walk in. We were waiting when you would arrive. We have heard that you have had uh, difficulties out in the wild. We offer our services. Never opening his eyes. He's like light blue with like little streaks of like yellow and red here and there. Uh, doesn't appear to have any real weapons on him. He has like a small pistol. Doesn't look all that impressive, but other he seems weaponless. Does does the rule mean the flies? Can you talk to flies? Uh, yes, I suppose you can say it. we are flies, but we are also meat. We are oh. both flies in meat and many other things. And he just opens his eyes at that point, looks like he's got bright blue eyes, and he goes to stand up, and as he does, all of like the swarm just starts to and just starts to layer on him in different places and sort of like patch in these little holes here and there. You can see he's got like metal stripes on his arms where like it looks like the flesh is gone and he's got parts of his body are now being replaced as the little flies or nanites begin to, to sort of fill in even on his face, like little chunks kind of get filled in as if like puzzle pieces. So well, out of character, I, uh, out of character, he's a nanosite. He's an NSA. Yeah. That's so awesome. <laughs> That's yeah. so cool. I can't wait to see this character. They're play. so cool. They are so cool. Wow. I've never seen meat flies before. That's really amazing. Well, they are not actually flies, but the one they are. We are many things. We are growing, evolving. We are learning every day. And we hope now we can learn from you. No, then. You in the collective sense. I don't understand that word. The, the group. Oh, okay. So he, he'll extend he'll extend his hand out like to, to greet and like flies will and you'll see like like it'll almost like it it'll it'll sort of almost dematerialize briefly the hand and it'll kind of rematerialize in the process as he reaches his hands out to sort of shake everyone's hand. I am I'm sorry, I still we still make the mistake. We are Vernon. It is a pleasure to meet you, Vernon. I am Rafe of the Kish. Rafe of the Kish. We are honored to meet you. Yeah, Vinny, Vinny or Zenny is like obviously like enthralled. This is spectacular. Coming from a, a hive background, this is like spectacular. Um, Zenny will walk right up and grab your hand and Vernon. Caden Kalen has blessed this meeting. You are most welcome. Ah, <laughs> yes, as has Triun, the transcendent will help all of us achieve a higher form of evolution. Pleasure to meet you. Zenny's yeah, Zenny still naked, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've just got to your quarters. Mm. Yeah, doesn't but even phase Vernon doesn't, doesn't 
doesn't phase them at all. Shy and Shireen aren't that, you know, they're giant insects. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Hello. I'm Blim Blim. I'm Private Musclasiest. I'm really happy you're here. I want to see you grow as much as possible. But if you grow too much more, you're probably not going to fit in your domicile anymore because you're already very large. Is this humor or are you being literal? We have trouble with that of late. I don't read very many books and I'm not sure if I'm funny. I shall heed your warning and I will be careful. <laughs> we will be careful how much we grow or how quickly. Vernon, okay. if you would be so kind, we, we have other matters we must attend to now that we're back in the colony. Would you care to join us so you can integrate yourself into the team more thoroughly? We would be happy to join you. Yes. So you you report to the same patron. You're basically sent here by the patron on a different ship. Uh, you came mm -hmm. in a later ship. So you're you're all still part of the operation, and you report to the dragon that sent the others here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have a couple of guests waiting for you. Shall we go see the Pazlatov? Uh, charter for store. Uh, Denny will disappear and go get dressed into another robe. <laughs> Come around the corner. Sounds good to me, sir. Yes! Let. Us. Go. Sure, so you, uh, you radio to uh to your chief advisor there arizin and they let you know which um one of the buildings that they put up the pozlatov uh representative at <clears throat> so you guys head over that way uh you enter the building and you're greeted by a female human she looks quite capable like quite comfortable like they turn around they look at you they stand tall, chiseled features, very, like, at the ready sort of stance at all times. They turn and they, they see the group of you and, oh, you must, you're the ones I've been waiting for. I've been, I've been waiting a couple days to speak with you. I'm so glad that you finally returned. That's true. <laughs> yes, I've come here to speak to you regarding that stone spire to the south of here. You see, our our charter has some interests in it, and um, we're hoping to maybe form a an alliance with you. Uh, looking into this further, we'd be interested in our mystics taking a look at the spire and reviewing any data or information you may have on it. That would possibly be acceptable. What terms? For this partnership, are you offering? Well, they get all kind of really, really serious. So all of a sudden, they start looking around. They go, "You'd need to give us as much detailed information as you have about this stone needle. You need to give us all other evidence. You need to hand it over to us, and anything that your your camp has." You need to give it all to us, and we'll take over investigations at this point. But we'll make you aware of anything that we uncover. I appreciate your interest, but I do not think that is in the best interest of our colony. If you wish to partner equally, perhaps you could send a team of scientists here to stay at our colony, and we could... Exercise a joint operation to investigate the spire. Well, I don't think this is really science related from what my team seems to believe. This is mystical more than anything. And we do have mystics here as well who are interested in investigating. That is why I think that if we approach this as true partners, it would benefit both colonies. 
Hmm. You understand that our charter here is primarily interested in pharmaceutical and medical research. Perhaps there is mystical applications to the spire that might help our patron uh, develop the cures he seeks. I do not believe our interests are at cross purpose. You can make a diplomacy roll to try and convince her. I, I could try that. <laughs> yes. And it's also probably going to take some time and people are going to like you a lot more if we're all together versus you're just kind of doing your own thing by yourself. While you're chatting with her, everybody go ahead and make me a um, a sense motive roll, please, while you're interacting with her. Was that no. wisdom based? I sure hope it is. <laughs> Why is that not? Well, Zenny, you're successful. Hold on, let me. I gotta reopen. Vernon, character. you're successful. <laughs> Blim. <laughs> that tracks. <laughs> it's. Yep. <laughs> and Rafe. So all of you, while you're you're talking to her, it almost seems like like something keeps grabbing her attention, or she's like keeping an eye out for something. She's looking out the window as she's talking to you, and you know you're 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 bringing your point forward, uh, Rafe, and you're trying to like negotiate with her, and she keeps looking and is distracted by something, and you pick up on this. I see that. Your attention is not fully focused on this. Is there some other concern you have here within the camp? She's she's caught off guard when you catch her on this, and she goes, "Sorry, I'm sorry. My my husband, my husband was sent out a few days ago to deliver a message to your charter of welcome and friendship, but he seems to have." disappeared and we've lost communication with him somewhere between here and there and i was hoping maybe just by chance he'd be wandering around or maybe he made his way here and he wasn't able to contact us back but i haven't seen any sign of him would he have perhaps gone to the spire first on his way here yes he may have we did find evidence of tracks of a human oid individual medium build would have passed by and around the spire two days ago and headed back towards camp perhaps he is here and we can help you find him if that would set your mind at ease and then perhaps we could negotiate a more a, a more fair arrangement for both of our charters um yeah. Did you end up making a diplomacy roll also? Nope, but I will. It's okay. Gonna be tra- it's it's going to be tragic. Kind of like Blim Blam's uh, wisdom-based rolls? Yep. Yep. Five. She goes, I appreciate it. I appreciate the offer. Hopefully, um, hopefully he turns up. For the time being, I will consider your offer, but um, it's not in line with what I was sent here to present to the group of you. That is understood. Just remember that we are always open to an equal partnership should you desire to look into the spire more closely. Very good. She thanks you. Let's you know that I'll stay here for another day or two if that's fine and before I head back. Absolutely. We will see if we cannot locate your husband. Yes. It while is, you stay. It's- it's the right thing to do. I'm very sorry. I'm I'm sure you're putting on the good face for us, but that must be hard for you. I'm really sorry. Losing people is tough. Yes, I heard you've lost one of your own recently. I'm sorry to hear that. This is a harsh world we're finding out very, very quickly. Yes, we are as well, unfortunately. And he will actually, Rafe will describe the plant um, and its attacks, its actions, and, and how it lured uh, Dr. Boswick in and so that her charter can be on the look out for, for similar uh, similar plants as a sign of good faith and, and friendship. She appreciates that and she thanks you. <clears throat> she seems like she's a very honorable uh, person by the way they handled themselves. You suspect maybe even 
uh, with that uh, perception test, maybe even ex-military, by the way they handle themselves. Okay. It is possible, if we negotiate this further, that we might even allow, depending on the skills of your mystics, for you to take the lead, as long as we could have representatives embedded with your research team. Something to think about. Very good. I will radio back to the charter and see what they have to say. It's not an unreasonable offer. Well, if you will forgive us, we have other guests we must see to. Please feel free to enjoy the colony as it is now. And we hope that you find your husband. We shall also endeavor to find him. Do you have a hollow pick or a bio scan of your husband so we may attempt to find him as well? She says, yes, I do. I can, I can transfer to your data pad. And she hits some buttons on hers and transfers an image or images of him and his last known whereabouts to your, uh, to your pad. Oh, wow. He's very handsome. Thank you. Hopefully it is, he is handsome and not was. Yes, is. I like the word is. Very good. I'm going to call back to my charter and see what they have to say based off your offer. It was a pleasure to meet you. <clears throat> and likewise, she says. So we shall we see if uh, we can do equally poorly with diplomacy with the Celestine yeah. Charter? <laughs> yeah. So you go to the, the other building, and this one's a little bit larger. This is the one you're told brought a team with them. And you enter, and again, you see a human female, and she's standing over a couple of, it looks like maybe workers or something, and she's like pointing and kind of like, demanding and shouting at them like listen we need to go back over there we need to do this we need to do that and she's kind of startled as you enter she's like, oh hello are you the ones that have been keeping me waiting the last couple days we are the command team of this charter colony mm. and we have been exploring as is our remit had you notified us that you were traveling here we could have met you earlier I am Rafe of the Kish, and who might you be? I am Bundina Lord of the Human. I represent the Charter Celestine. I am here with a small party of stonecutters. We brought our own mining equipment, and we're interested in the stone spire to the south of here. What is your interest in the spire? We want to examine it further. I'm here to offer you six RU, which are resource units. Um, if you transfer us all data you have and give up all claims to the spire, my team will go there. We will cut out the inscriptions along the base that we have identified. And we want all information pertaining to the spire that you currently have. We appreciate your offer. Vernon will speak up, and Vernon does not have high charisma. Definitely a dumb stat, so just understand <laughs> this. But he will say, we do not want to work with one who is so cruel to their collective. If this is how you treat those who work with you, why would we then volunteer to be part of that collective? Rafe, this seems like folly. You are correct, Vernon. I was going to politely decline their very one-sided offer one-sided uh, we're offering we're offering you money we're offering you goods here what do you mean one-sided what she you are offering does it. not what you are offering does not come close to what you are demanding what do you mean what do you do you know something we don't about the spire as far as we know it's uh there's nothing there then what the is i know nothing <laughs> we just want to examine it further we want any information you have we want you to hand it over to us we don't want your people knowing about it and if they do know about it we want you to enact a law criminalizing any speech of it or transfer records I understand 
We would like to now escort you away from our colony. You are not welcome here. What? What? She says, like, <laughs> take it aback. What do you mean, not welcome here? You are an aggressive individual. That's how you get things done. Clearly, Sometimes, you are yes. a mistake here. This, the nerve. This is going to make its way back to the Celestine Charter, and they're going to be made aware of this. You've made enemies here on this planet. You've made your first enemies. Just, just know that. Do we all understand this? I believe I understand this. I do. So, I'm really sorry that it went that way, but if you're going to make enemies with people, you should start being better friends with the people that you're with if you're going to make enemies with other people. Because then you're going to have nobody, and having nobody is really terrible. And looks Maybe. to you, and just nods with like this sagely wisdom. The little one speaks true. It was a pleasure meeting you. I am attempting what Rafe, I believe, would call diplomacy. Now, please leave. I believe you are to the east. Is that correct? Yes. Then you can see the spider at a distance as you return to your home. You've Goodbye. made a grave mistake here today. This would not be the first time I have gone. To... This would not be the first time we have gone to the grave. You do not frighten me. Now, please leave. Huh. She kind of scoffs. Fine, very well. Grab our, grab your things. She turns to the small team of stonecutters. We're leaving. They all fall. Travels. <laughs> but she said, be safe. Just because you're not nice doesn't mean we want something terrible to happen to you. Let's see how long you last on this planet. She mutters as she pushes her way past the group of you and out the door. And we uh can we put a couple of drones in the air to follow their <laughs> follow them out of our territory? Sure. You guys I'm assuming you would have equipment like that. <clears throat> I'm sure you can send a couple drones to follow them as far as they're able to. I just want to uh, make sure they don't make a detour to the spire. To the spire, just start cutting <laughs> chunks out of it. Yeah, if, they right. start, if they start the detour, we're, we're, we will mobilize. But It's a whole day's travel back there. Okay, so they huff and puff and they leave and they get out of there and yeah, so you're left now with uh, one representative left who is going to message back to their charter. You've also, uh, you get a call on your comms, and again, it's from your, your charter advisor, Ezrin, and they go, hey, listen, I saw the group from the Celestine Charter, Celestine Charter leaving here in a huff, and they're kind of causing a scene. They're riling up uh, people here in the colony. What's going on? They made draconian demands and threats against the Charter. They insisted on taking complete ownership of the Spire and required that we would criminalize any knowledge of the Spire. We cannot allow that within our corporate bounds, so we asked them to depart. Later this evening, after we've dealt with uh, Veach Veach, and assisted the Pazlatov Charter, we will have a meeting for all the colonists so we can fill everyone in on what has occurred over the last few days, what we've learned, and some of the harsh realities of what we will face here as we build our new home. Can you make that announcement and ensure that everyone is ready for that? I can do that. I think that would be an excellent idea after what's happened the last couple of days. All right. So, do you want to go see Feech Feech after this? Do you want to go back to see Threll, the uh, the representative from the Plaztov Charter? We could split up. Two of us could deal with trying to find Threll's husband, and two of us could go deal with Feech Feech. Or, if that's likely to get us killed, we can all stick together. Uh, Threll's husband, last known coordinates, are like far south on the map. Like oh, okay. far, far, far south from where you guys have been. Then let's deal with uh, Veach Veach. 
Well, but b- before that, can't we send a message to our scout who was? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a good idea. Good yeah, idea. that is a good idea. Ellen is, yeah. The Thank skeletal you. scout. Yep, the bone trooper. Hey, our, our bone trooper. Loyal, our only loyal uh, colonist. I know, the only person. Well, I'd say maybe your 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 uh, your chief advisor maybe is indifferent to you. <laughs> indifferent. Indifferent. Who's the, uh, Who's the one that you you helped out the silo there in the first mission? I'm sure they mm-hmm. like you. But then you, the, the dwarf was left face down in the mud with the electricity. You didn't go help him. So maybe he doesn't like you. Ah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I mean, hey, we're, we're dying here trying to keep you people alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Literally. I'm just... literally dying here. Rafe, I'm glad you're so full of good ideas and sending you two. These people are idiots if they want to get rid of either of you. I am just a scout. I I am happy to be a part of this community, but I was never a leader of my people. If they want to choose a different leader here, that is fine by me. You must have really good leaders where you're from because you know your shit. They are very wise. They worshipped closely to the ancestor spirits before we found out that those were just holograms of our dead people. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) He just accepts that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So let's go, uh, let's go check out Veach Veach. Yeah, Veach Veach is your environmental researcher and zoologist. You heard that they had locked themselves in their greenhouse last. There's explosions going off their house a couple days ago, and uh, they've locked themselves in, and they've last been seen kind of poking around the greenhouse in the back of their 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 dwelling. Oh, before that, though, was Zinni able to get a hold of uh, Alinus and have him try to pick up the trail of... Oh, uh, yes! Yes, they, they answer. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm on it. I'm somewhat in the area, and I will watch them and follow them as far as I can until they're uh, they're off of our charter land. It's the least I can do. Thank you again for keeping the, that a secret. This, I owe you. This is of the utmost important yes indeed trust no i won't i won't mess up i told you i won't mess up again you you can trust me we do that is why we have chosen you for this job thank you thank you again Um, did you get those goat spiders back okay we did. Have you found any more on your travels? I have, I have, and I've been making little makeshift pens that I can return to and bring them back to the colony when I have a chance. Excellent. Why did, hey, can I ask you a question? Oh, of course. Why didn't you just sacrifice one of them to that creature that got Dr. Bostwick? My friend, Kagan Kalen works in mysterious ways. Who are we to say which life is more important. Yeah. <laughs> the spider go passes all their saves. That's right, Jeff. That's right. They got twenty twos <laughs> on every roll. <laughs> By the goats have excellent attributes. <laughs> I don't even think they're statted. Ah, uh, that's how that's how good they are. That's how good they're godly. I don't beep. want, we don't want to alarm anyone, but there have been several explosions from that one creature's home. 
people have not done anything about it, though. It is very peculiar. The word around the community is that no one can do anything until the rest of you return. I feel, we feel, that there is perhaps an over-dependency on you all. And for people who are meant to be space colonists going to a wild frontier planet, likely they should be more fortuitous and creative and capable of handling simple tasks themselves without incessantly communicating with you all to the point that one of you voluntarily fed himself to a plant <laughs> so he does not want to listen to them anymore. Just what we have heard, that is. You are not wrong, Vernon. They are a very needy bunch. <laughs> but yes. perhaps we can write this ship and we'll start with Veach Veach. Yeah. Um, so you head to Veach Veach's home. Uh, as you approach, you can see that one of the windows on the side of the house looks like it's kind of charred and there's carbon scoring on there. And there's a board that's put over top of the smashed window from the inside. You kind of circle the building or the, yeah, the building. And it looks like there's like a, a bookcase shoved in front of another one of the windows and like all of, everything's covered up. Uh, as you look around the outside, you make your way around back to the greenhouse and you can see some activity in there, seeing as how it's all a, a, a room of windows and it is not boarded up uh, and covered up, but it's very, very dense with condensation. So it's hard to see in there what is going on. Well, Vernon will knock on the door. Or you, <laughs> you knock on the door and kind of wait. And there's not really, an, there's no answer. But you can hear thing, something moving in there. All of a sudden you can hear like a pot, maybe a potted plant get knocked over and crash. And you just hear the sound of, like the sound of someone sucking in air between their teeth. Like, uh, uh. you see this like, this raptor, this over raptor reptile head poke up and like kind of look from behind one of the the rows of plants at you and makes direct eye contact with a group of you. And you can easily see the, the colorful feathers that they wear on its, on a, a headdress on top of its head, poking up when it does so. And, uh, immediately they make eye contact and they duck their head back down. Please open the door. I promise we are not imposters. The head slowly raises up again, as if checking to see if you're still there, and you are. And the uh, over raptor stands up, and it kind of like hangs its head down, and uh, walks over to the door. You can see the shape against the condensation walking towards the door, and the door handle twists down, opens up a crack, and staring at you glumly, kind of looking at the floor is Veach Veach. <sighs> Uh, yes. Why are you exploding your domicile? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I am talking about the sounds of explosions coming from your domicile. Or, or maybe what we think is explosions <laughs> is you, like, doing studying. Maybe you've been studying something. Maybe you could teach us. I like learning. Uh, well, we had several strict quotas about what we could bring and couldn't bring. And I had some license with that since I could set space restrictions for my creatures. <clears throat> he kind of opens the door a little bit more and points towards a cage in the greenhouse. Uh, oh, a bunch of caged creatures. I may have taken some uh, liberties. <coughs> with my discretion and brought some creatures that are 
illegal to import? Can we see them like to the point where we make them identify? <laughs> them? Uh, there, there, there are cages with creatures in them behind Veach Veach, but there are also some empty um, cages. Reach, reach, uh, sucks air through his teeth again. Do you know what diathes are? Explosive slugs, some call them. This is not a creature that I am familiar <laughs> with. Where is it? Well, it's it's not it, it's them. Uh, I had uh, a, a few that I brought along. I'm f- four to be exact. And uh, I successfully raised them to maturity since arriving. But um, when I was tending to my laboratory the other morning, uh, one of the slugs detonated and inadvertently freed the others. And I haven't been able to find them. And they're somewhere in here. And that's why I've locked myself in the, in the, in the, in the, in the greenhouse. They're somewhere in my house, not here with me. So, ah, do they then, die when they detonate? Yes. Oh no, I'm sorry. How can we capture them without them detonating? Uh, I've got a plan. I've got this tincture, and he holds this uh, out to you. It goes of of acolyte greens that should draw. It will draw them out. But uh, there's still the problem that they're very hard to capture alive, and. Probably unlikely. They'll most likely explode when you try to capture them. Mm. Is there is there any way to anesthetize them after we draw them out? Zenny, mm. do you, would you be capable of putting them to sleep by calling upon the the will of Kate and Kaling? <laughs> Only. If they are sentient, Uh, which I fear they are not, there must be another way, Beach Beach. How else? Were you going to capture them? I don't know. That's kind of how I'm in this predicament of living in my greenhouse. Okay. But he, okay. So you know them a little bit. What sort of things do they like? They like this. And he holds out the tincture in his claws. Taps one of the tink, tink, tink claws on the glass. The tincture. And... Like, I don't know. Dr. Boss would know what to do. Um, I'm how, sorry for the loss. So if, if they're exploding, it must be like some sort of bio thing. Or like, right? Um, do you know what it is inside them that makes them do the boom? Hmm. I don't. I was hoping to study them more further here on this planet. You know, because there's no laws and they are outlawed everywhere in the galaxy. And perhaps we are seeing why now. But that is a moot point. Hmm. Hmm. Well, they're, they're very energy dense from what i've observed and that's what makes them unstable perhaps if you're able to capture or lure them back into a a cage without too much jostling or uh, getting uh, you know physical with them we might be able to save them without exploding okay okay so we lure them to a spot we need somebody with some steady hands so we maybe we lay out a bit of the tincture in a path Mm. into the cage and then (laughs) the most of it in the cage and draw them in while one of us quietly hides and once they are in simply shut the cage door sounds good 
And worst comes to worst, yeah, we could probably use a mix of like stealth and sleight of hand. Yeah. Do we get back stamina after an encounter? Or like yeah, after we've had rest. Ten minute okay. rest. Yeah, I mean we've been uh, for days. You, yeah. You've been resting, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we'd have back our because I'm just picturing like I'm I'm nearly dead, but okay, let's do this. So diatha are pretty common. They're actually native to Vesk 2, Vernon. And they're also oh. they've also been known to be used as ammunition in some weapons because of their <laughs> ability to ignite <laughs> their properties of ignition. So you've heard of these diatha before, and you know that they are pretty dangerous they're like they look like slugs they're mm. tiny they're they're tiny little vermin and um so they're 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 quite well known you also know that uh they give off the sm smell of like raw petroleum mm. so they're quite easy to like detect in an area and when they're threatened they'll bite you and if they're they're like damaged or jostled enough they w they are known to explode Okay. Each witch, do you know how many there are approximately? There are three remaining. And they are all localized to your domicile. Unless they have escaped. Into how the quickly colony? do they reproduce? Well... It took the trip, the time of the trip, a couple months for them to gain maturity. Uh, <coughs> they could theoretically be reproducing right now. Reach, hmm. Reach, could you close the door for a moment? I must say something you don't want to hear to my compatriots. Yeah, okay. He closes the door slowly. You can still see his outline on the other side through the condensation. We think we should destroy these slugs. <laughs> they are invasive species. They can cause severe damage to the community. They should not have been here to begin with. They could reproduce and cause loss of life. Saving them is perhaps the lesser choice. I agree, but I think we should try to capture them and remove them from the colony before they're destroyed to prevent any damage to the structures here. Agreed. So, try to implement the plan of luring them into a cage. All right. Those are clear. That's what we're doing. I was going to put Dr. Bostrick down. Rip. Death is just another form of <laughs> transcendence. He is still with us within the earth and soil. All right. That sounds nice. What the? Sorry. These tokens are acting funny again. These tokens are acting funny. I'll move you guys to a map here. You make your way through the house. Just getting your tokens set up again. We're going in. So he Veach Veach opens the door again. Veach Veach was obviously listening. Opens the door when you're done. And uh so you'll do it. We will take care of this problem, Veach Veach. Do you have any other illegal species here that are of concern to the company? No, 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 no. That's that's it. I promise that's it. You guys can all make a sense motive roll if you want against Veach Veach. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm going to believe him. <coughs> because if you did have more illegal creatures, I was going to... We were I going to ask blimble. to purchase them. Oh, Way to go, Zenny. Oh my gosh. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No. There's, there's nothing else. You read him. He doesn't really seem to feel remorse. It's more like anxiety that he got caught and that he's going to get in trouble. But he see like he but it he appears to be honest and on the level that this is it for illegal and dangerous creatures that he smuggled 
on the trip when he tells you that this is it. But it almost kind of seems like indifferent to the whole situation. Like, shit, I got caught. I'm going to get in trouble now, so, sort of thing. Can, can I just be honest with you? Yes. Like, these things are very concerning. Can you give us like a really good reason about what you expected to learn from them that would make them so valuable to not dispose of? Because like, it's, I'm not the smartest guy. I give you that. But this seems like a really bad idea. So did you have something really good that you thought you were going to get from it to make uh, it worth it? Like I said, I thought we could, I could conduct research on them and oh, perhaps they would be of use to us here. But I thought maybe a form of fuel. Well, fuel is a good thing in a place like this. Vich, Vich, if we can capture and dispose of these, we will keep this indiscretion between us as long as you continue to do your work faithfully in support of the Charter. If we uh, keep this between us, uh, ah, you... You'll have my vote in the upcoming elections that are rumored to be brewing. Well, I would prefer you to vote your conscience, but I see no reason for you to suffer from a lapse in judgment. As long as we can protect the colony by capturing these creatures and disposing of them safely. Beach Beach shrugs. <laughs> the raptor shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hands you the tincture and its big clawed talons. Please try not to destroy my house. <coughs> More in than a dollar to has been. Okay. We will certainly try. Not Doctor? To. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you're talking to you're talking to Beach Beach? Of course. That's doctor. what you I, Yeah, that's Vichy. what I've understood. If yeah. somebody's a doctor, you're supposed to say that. Beach Beach looks around the room. Yes. I I don't know. That just the they they always said that before. <laughs> then he'll pat you on the head and and continue going into because the because we're we're in we're in Beach Fish's house. Or You're in Beach Fish's house. You're in the greenhouse right now. Oh, bear with me here. The screen just went. Ooh. So maybe like maybe like Rev like he's really smart about knowing how animals move. He can find like a good ambush site. And then I'll hide in the shadows and I've got four hands and my feet. And like I can like put some of the stuff over here with these hands and then use these hands to capture it. And then very slowly and securely, I'll grab it. Well, so, I, I was thinking we would just lure it into the cage and then shut the cage door. But we can grab them if you want. <laughs> oh, we've got cages. Then yeah. my idea is stupid and I don't want to do it. <laughs> Yeah, there's so, empty cages here in the greenhouse. So you're standing in the greenhouse. This is at the back of the house. You have three doors in here. The two of them lead outside, one to the west and one to the south. You have a door to your, I'm sorry, one to the east and one to the south that leads outside. You have a door to your west that leads further into the house. He's piled up some like crates and things like that in front of that door to the west. But he steps aside and kind of points to his, oh, that's the way in uh, over there. So we'll try to quietly dismantle his barricade and grab one of the empty cages um, and then sort of stealthily, you know, make our way into the house, you know, seeing side on for, for any targets. Okay. Yeah, you grab some of the empty cages. There's animals, a menagerie of animals in here, and they kind of like react to you as you get close. They back away and some of them like hoop and holler and yeah. Make your way. Who wants to go to the door first? Who wants to go in there? You also have the tincture that you're supposed to is supposed to attract them. I mean, oh. th this is kind of Rafe's thing. I mean, survival and mm. stealth and and perception. So uh, he he assumes he's going to be the one going in first. But well, I, I agree with that to a point. But once it's time to make contact, I would ask that you have me do that. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right behind me. When it would be toward the front, he will also extend his arms. The various creatures will swarm around and will form a sheath over top of him to improve his stealth in sleight of hand. Hmm. All right. Your meat flies are very impressive. So his nanocytes are badass. <laughs> yeah. 
Apparently. Yes, we are very impressive. Thank you, Private First Class Blim Blam. Okay. So who's going first? Rafe? Rafe. Rafe, yeah. Which one's which? All right, I'm on the I'm going to stay to the bottom side. Zinny, cuz I think I'm the bottom one. You are the bottom one, yeah. Huh. I'll put your I, name I as I will me. I will Be pace behind Rafe making sure he is up ahead. He is far quieter than me, but I am not without stealth capabilities. And it says Vernon now underneath yours. Ah. Good. All right, Rafe, you the door opens and you're greeted uh to the site of Veach uh laboratory. This is where he conducts his experiments. And he's been studying the wildlife of this planet and the plant life of this planet so far that you guys have uncovered from the nearby forest. And the room reeks heavily of raw petroleum, which is a telltale sign that these things are somewhere in the walls of the house or in the adjacent room, somewhere around here. But you can, it hits your nose as soon as you walk in there. So what I figure we set the cage up around here and okay. then then have a line of of the the tincture, you know, basically leading up and into the cage and then the majority of it in there, and then we kind of hide. Um and just kind of wait. Wait to see what, what happens. Wait to see if they fall okay. for the bait. Yeah. And so I, I would think maybe private first class blim blam is hiding on top of the cage so that if they all go in he can drop the 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 door on the cage it's a, it's a small cage these are slugs yeah so it's a pretty small cage good thing i am also small with <laughs> many hands do you want to wait in there with these things uh, not inside the cage oh yeah i mean in, in the, the room? room or yeah. in the adjacent room or yes. what's Okay. I will be very close so that I can respond quickly because Rafe's plan is very wise. <laughs> Rise, wise Rafe. He comes from a people that are wise. He told me so. <laughs> but, we're, but we're not real smart, which is why he puts himself in very stupid, dangerous situations like this all the time. <laughs> no, these are brave situations. Sure. You should be proud. Hmm. <laughs> Mm, you're right, uh, Megan. These things are mindless, by the way. Mindless. Okay, so you put the cage down. You put the tincture. You kind of... It's not a, It's not huge. The tincture is tiny. Mm -hmm. So you kind of put the majority of its contents in the cage and then a little bit outside and you wait. You sit there and you wait. And after some time, all of a sudden, three slugs... Kind of just starts slithering out of the walls. One of them drops out of the ceiling and down on the floor into this like slimy puddle. And two more slither out, one from behind a table and one from another behind a piece of equipment machinery. And they all start slowly slithering and making their way towards this, this cage that you put down. And it appears that the tincture that the contents of the tincture that Veach Veach gave you is actually attracting them and working as they slowly slither over to this cage. Uh, it's taking quite some time because they're quite slow, but you can clearly see these diathus uh, making their way over there. And it does appear to be three like Veach Veach told you. And after some time, they do make their way inside of the cage itself. And there, all three of them are in there, kind of like eating or slurping on this, whatever the contents of this tincture was. It's alkali green. I'm going to hold my breath and very slowly close the cage. Ever so slightly. And then try to step away. All right. Let's, uh, let's do a roll to get up there. You want to try okay. and stealthfully make your way up there? That that sounds like a good thing. Okay, let's make me a stealth roll, please. Well, it's oh. going to be a DC of uh, 16. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my yeah! God! Blim Blam! 27! <laughs> You're, like, crawling on the ceiling. 
crawl in there quietly, you creep up on the cage, you reach over to the door on the front of the cage, and they don't even notice you. They're so engrossed and consumed by this, the contents of this tincture, and you slowly bring the door down and close the latch on it. And the three, uh, the three diathis have been contained successfully without exploding. Woohoo! 27. Nicely done. And tiny and sneaky. <laughs> now All right. I have to move it very carefully. Do not shake the cage. Okay. I like to move it, move it. <laughs> I like to move it, move it. I like to move it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs> <Don't be. laughs> all right. Okay. I'll I'll use all four hands for extra balance and stability. <laughs> uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna see here. I might just carry forward your exceptional stealth roll. Free explode. That and way I can have like one hand on each brother. corner of the cage. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna you rolled so well. And over the target number on your stealth, I'll just, we'll use that. You scoop up this cage carefully and you slowly are walking back with it to, back towards the greenhouse. The others are kind of standing there watching and you're like, waiting, like, get, get all the way, get, move, move. As you walk to the door, you make your way back and you stand in the entranceway and Veach, Veach, his eyes light up when he sees the cage and the three diathis in there. You did it and you didn't destroy my house. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, am I okay to keep these? No. We will be taking in the slugs and disposing of them, but we will keep to our agreement, Veach Veach. This is between us. He hangs his head. Very good. We would simply hate to see you get injured by them on, by accident. You are too valuable to the colony. <laughs> Shrugs, this is true. <laughs> this is true. We learned about a really cool plant out there that you might want to know about. Oh, where can also, I find spider this plant? goats? Oh, where can I find these spider goats in this plant? You do not want to see the plant yourself. It devoured Dr. Bosdwick. Oh, no, I really do. <laughs> Bos That's good. I would love for you to study it and teach me how to kill it because I'm very angry with it. Before we go out, we will have to go in a full, fully environmental sealed armor so that its lures cannot affect us. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe Elidus can get it. They don't. They don't smell or taste or anything. It was a very formidable plant, but perhaps. Very Let's good. Have a look at that, Rich, Rich. You're so smart. I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> I appreciate you, Blim Blam. Do I have consent to hug you? Yeah. He holds out a little a, a talon, a giant, giant uh, uh, taloned <laughs> hand, and just kind of fist pumps. Holds out a fist <laughs> pump with you. That giant sucks. claws. Wish I had claws. Those are so cool. <laughs> Kind of like adjusts his headdress, feathered head, colorful feathered headdress. Kind of very proud this moment. So, you want to take the diathus away and dispose of them? Yes. Okay, you're not going to let Beach Beach keep no. <laughs> them to explode and exploit? Right, they might no. have babies. They said they could be reproducing. Or is that the bad thing? That's a bad thing. <laughs> so, in this case, killing babies is good. <laughs> Dis disposing of slugs who are a danger to the colony is good. Okay. I try not to speak in generalities. My, I am not well versed in your common tongue yet, and I would not want to be misunderstood. That's okay. I misunderstand myself all the time. <laughs> that was very skillfully done, Private Blim Blam. Oh, that was your plan. I just, I just, I execute. And you did it very well. 
by not executing. That's true. Goodbye, babies. I'm sorry you have to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> why don't we leave off at of that point? We're at uh, the top of the hour here. We'll leave off at of that point for this week. And we'll come back with Actun Cthulhu next week. Let's do the uh, round table with what everybody's got going on. Aaron, what do you have going on between now and next week, Thursday? Well, I think uh, we're going to play test a little of this new Marvel uh, superhero role-playing game tomorrow on uh, Garblad Games. That's right. Uh, and then uh, next Wednesday, uh, we'll be back for more Wrath and Glory on Garblad Games at uh, 9 p.m. British Standard Time. And Thursday, Cyberpunk Red, British Time, and then Actun Cthulhu. Actun Cthulhu. We're going to wrap up Vienna. Wrapping up Vienna. Dang, we're going to dig up some graves. That's where we left off. Grave digging. No, we got, we're got. we leaving off at the uh, the, the the book club. The, yeah, the, the Sphinx Club. Then we're going to dig up a grave. Then we're going to dig up a grave. Uh, Jeff, what do you have going on between now and next week, Thursday? Uh, let's see. Tomorrow, I think we might be doing some Star Wars as a one shot as we were taking a week off from Traveler. It's over at twitch.tv slash the lollygagger. Are you doing uh, Edge of the Empire? Yeah, I think so. I'm not nice. running it. Uh, Captain Karine, I think he's going to run a one shot for us if we can get the players. Um, we're not doing one ring on Saturday, but Jeremy and I will be over on Grim and Perilous Play Saturday night, where I will start up a, a heart campaign. I'm running for them. Oh, very cool. Uh, yes. Yeah. Good uh, it's game. very fun. Jeremy's been waiting two years to play. Yeah. And uh, and then on Monday, we'll be back over on our channel, our channel, Lollygaggers, playing Holler for Savage Worlds. Very nice. Very nice. Jeremy, why don't you tell me about this uh, Patreon yeah, uh, check out Aaron Reese on Patreon. You've got comic books, you've got art assets, you've got RPG stuff, you've got maps, and a nice array of stuff. He's got a really fun cyberpunk one that came out recently. Check it out. Awesome. And Megan, we haven't spoken what, for two weeks now, so what did you play? What board games did you play? Didn't play any board games, but I did play um, an in-person RPG game called Red Carnations on a Black Grave. Um, I was really apprehensive about playing this. It's very specific to the uh, um, uh, the Paris Commune. Um, however, it was spectacular. It was amazing. Um, I'm sad I missed it. That was while I was sick last week. I also missed that, amongst many other things. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, would strongly recommend it. Um, you play it once, in my opinion, and it's it's good, but really cool definitely yeah it was really good now B bill's gonna run us through a uh, meat grinder for alien yeah I said a funnel make it mm. two characters be good uh okay and for me i'm gonna be yeah running the play test of the new marvel rpg tomorrow on garb Lake games at 3 p.m central standard time so join us for that uh if you're interested to see an action jeff and aaron will be there along with others and uh that's it for me then until next week thursday so have yourselves a great week everyone and hopefully you're able to join us and see this this marvel game in action tomorrow if not we'll catch it on video on demand have a great week and we'll see you all later